Let's get all the unwanted vibration frequencies and energy clear it out before we start. Peace and love to you. Chapter 9. <clears throat> Prayer wipes out all karma. We have finished with the miracles of healing reported in the book of Luke, which have parallel accounts in Mark and Matthew. The book of John is the most mystical book in the Bible. In the ninth chapter of John, a story is told of a man which was blind from his birth. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. He, he could see again. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. John 9, 1 through 9. <clears throat> Related passages, Matt 9, 27 through 30. Matt 12, 22. Matt 20, 30. Matt 30 through 34. Mark 10, 46 through 52. You can read a more extensive account in my books, The Meaning of Reincarnation and Peace Within Yourself, which gives the psychological meaning of the book of John. In ancient times, it was believed that if a man were born blind, it was due to past karma and that he was here to expiate for his sins. The people of that day also believed that the sins of the parents were communicated to the children. For example, if the parents were insane, all the children would be insane. The sins spoken of in the Bible refers to the mental attitude, the mood, the feeling of the parents. All sin refers to movements of the mind rather than that of the body. Parents transmit their habitual thinking, fears, tensions, and false beliefs through the mind, not the body. So mental vibrations, you know how they say, we inherit this through genes, genetics. Well, Joseph is implying that it comes from the mind. Mental vibrations transmitted to you, you receive them, you take them as your thoughts, and they manifest in your body. Unless you reprogram yourself and you start to believe in the God in you. Our feelings and moods create. What tone do you strike during a marital 
creative act. Okay, so let me go back when it said parents transmit their habitual thinking, fears, tensions, and false beliefs through the mind. How can you reverse this? How can a person reverse this? You have to clean it out. You have to take the initiative to lose the false beliefs of you being nothing, of you being small, of you don't matter, of you being diseased or disadvantaged or poor or weak or whatever you got from your environment and your family and your friends. What tone do you strike during the marital creative act? There are blind and deaf states of consciousness from which blind and deaf children come from. Whatever tone is struck by the parents, a corresponding expression comes forth by the laws of reciprocal relationship. There is no instance in the Bible in which anyone was ever refused a healing. The absolute cannot and does not judge or condemn. It's all love. All judgment is given to the Son. All judgment is pronounced in our own mind. Each man arrives at his own decision or conclusion, and there is an automatic response to the law, the law of consciousness. If man thinks negatively, the response is negative. If he thinks positively and constructively, the reaction of the law of his mind is good and very good. The law the laws of nature in our mind cannot hold a grudge against us. There is not one law for a child and another for a man of 90 years older. The moment man goes within himself, goes within himself, close your eyes, sit down, be still, and know that I am God. The moment man goes within himself, claims his good, impresses his claim with faith and confidence, there is an automatic response of the law which honors the mental acceptance of his good. The past is forgotten and remembered no more. And remember, this is a work. This is a process. This is an actual working this isn't you just open up some book or hear somebody speak or say some affirmations or you got to work at this. It's a daily process of cleaning out your mental atmosphere. Reason rejects the popular. Superstitious belief of the people that man's blindness is due to his karma. That he may have blinded people in a former life and is now back on this plane to suffer and atone for his crime. Meaning that some people believe that since he was born blind, maybe he did something in the past life and now he got to pay for it this time. But with Joseph is in the blindness. That's not true. It's all mental. And if he clean out his mental atmosphere, he can see again. Now, in the Bible, they talk symbolic. So when they say blind, they talking about blind as in literally blind and blind as in he can't see because his, his mind is fogged. He can't see because he believe in negativity more than positivity when God is omnipresent omnipotent omniscient so that's the truth when they say the truth will set you free that's what they mean that knowing that God is all that omnipotent omniscient then you no 
know the truth and you start to operate that way and you are daily it becomes a lifestyle but like i said it's a process so don't be hard on yourself and don't don't expect your life to change like this you got to keep it the momentum going and sometimes you're gonna go like this but you're gonna come back and let you you don't have to but that's common you can go like this you know what i'm saying just a little bit but it's the rhythm balance okay so just take your time and just once a day twice a day three times a day whichever one pick one and do that sit down and meditate close your eyes sit down breathe be still and know that i am god within you that's all you gotta do just chill out and over time you're gonna start to notice changes in your behavior and your thought pattern Another very popular superstitious belief was, and still is, that a child may be born blind because his parents were blind or because they had sinned or had some physical disease. A man and wife, though, congenitally blind or blinded by accident, may give birth to children with perfectly normal vision. A mother through prayer may change the mental and physical nature of her child while he is still in the womb and bring about a perfect healing in god's eyes there are no blind deaf halt or lame people god sees everyone perfect in his creation as infinite perfection let me highlight some real quick I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. That's what Jesus is saying, him him that sent me. So who sent you? God, the creator. You come forth to the creator. I'm here talking on this phone, reading this book because of the creator. The creator has sent me. So I must work the works of him. So the power comes from within. What does it say? It is the father. He do up the works. And the father. The mother. Is in all of us. The same that was in Jesus. Is in all of us. Like it said. I have come to do great works. And you do too and you can do even greater works than I so you powerful too this means while the light of truth is shining we consciously direct the law to make clay of the spittle represents a drooling state like a boy hungers for candy and drools at the mouth it represents a joyful bubbling up state you have seen gazers buzzling up geysers bubbling up which make clay look very much alive the clay in the natural state represents the average man who is dead and unaware of the healing principle within him he is in other words dead to his inner potentialities as he awakens and becomes enthusiastic about the discovery of the powers within he becomes alive to God. This is the meaning of he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. The latter phase, the latter phrase in an oriental idiomatic figurative expression, meaning a deep inner conviction that we now have the consciousness of what we want and that we reject blindness or the old state of limitation. We are not here to suffer or expiate for sins or errors. We are here to awaken to the truth about ourselves and realize that 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God, that now is the day of salvation, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Like Paul, you can be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Remember, what is true of God is true of man. God can't possibly God can't possibly be blind, deaf, dumb, or sick. The truth about man is that the living spirit almighty is within him. God is all bliss, wholeness, joy, perfection, harmony, and peace. God is all the wonderful things you have ever heard of. There cannot possibly be any quarrel or division in the boundless wisdom. As you anchor your mind on these eternal verities about God, identify yourself with them mentally, and a rearrangement of the thought patterns will take place in your mind, and the wholeness and perfection of God will be made manifest. The clay spoken of is a hard, dry, false belief. It is a muddy, confused mind, which must be cleansed. Then we spat to bring forth our conviction of truth. Go wash in the pool of Siloam means give up and send away. Detach your consciousness, your way of thinking, from the old state, which washes away the false idea and feel and affirm the spirituality of all substance. The blind state also represents our inability to see the state that would bless us. When man does not know that his savior is a realization of his heart's desire, he is truly blind. We might also mention in this chapter dealing with the man born blind, that all men are born blind. We are born into all that our environment represents. We have to learn how to choose and differentiate so that gradually we awaken to the presence and power of God within us. There is a tendency among people to take everything literal. In your daily newspaper, you may see a cartoon depicting some extravagance or waste in government. You understand it as an allegorial allegorical picture of things that is visual allegory. We must remember that the Bible is an allegory in words. When people read of the blind, the halt, and the lame in the Bible, they usually think of it only from the physical side. We must see that there is also an internal deafness, an inner blindness, though the eyes and ears may not be impaired or diseased in any way. A man can be psychologically lame when he is afraid to take on a new project. In some instances, men refuse promotion because they are afraid they might fail. This is lameness even though the physical legs are perfect. Dr. Nicole of England stresses the fact that the transformation of meaning from the central or sensory level to the emotional and mental level is an act of faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians 5, 7. Most people walk by sight. That is, the literal meaning of everything dominates their consciousness. The blind man is the one who is blind inside. In Matthew we read, and behold, Two blind men were sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes, eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them, and he touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Matt 20, 30-34.
the two blind men refers to the average man who walks the earth because he is intellectually and emotionally blind. We have a conscious and a subconscious mind. Two phases or functions of the one mind in all. If we do not consciously choose good thoughts and meditate on the lovely and beautiful, our intellect is blind. If we fail to realize and draw forth the wisdom, intelligence, and power of the subjective self, we are blind to the kingdom of heaven within. A blind man thinks that hard work will make him wealthy. He fusses, frets, and fumes because he doesn't know that wealth is simply a state of consciousness. The feeling of wealth produces wealth. Because we working. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing this too. I'm working on this too. That's why I'm reading it because I want I'm I'm learning too. We learning together. <laughs> the feeling of wealth produces wealth. The feeling of health produces health. Confidence in the one eternal source and aligning ourselves mentally with it will take the form of wealth, health, peace, and all the blessed things of life. I just spoke with a young actress who receives a thousand dollars a week for a few hours work each week. She said there were other actresses far prettier, more attractive, better educated than she, getting a hundred or a hundred and fifty dollars a week in small parts. Her expl her explanation was that they had a low estimate of themselves and lacked confidence. A low estimate of themselves and lacked confidence. They were blind and did not know that if we make a bargain with life for a penny a day, that is what we will receive. So we need to we need to We need to have a higher estimate of ourselves, a higher value of ourselves. And when somebody approach you and asks you, what do you think you're worth? You don't bargain. You, you give them the price of what you think you worth. And when you know that God is within you, you know you're worth. They can't pay you enough. <laughs> So make sure you get the big bucks so you can live your life and you can devote more time to your family and to meditation and to exercise and to rest and to do your hobbies and things you love to do while also making enough money to sustain yourself and others. If they will overcome their estimate of themselves and claim their good and consciousness, there will be an automatic response. For according to your belief, it is done unto you. A few hours ago, I chatted with a man who is leaving this city to take a sales manager's job in San Francisco. Last month, he was getting meager wages according to some union scale. His eyes were open in our recent class on the inner meaning of the book of Job. He began to picture himself receiving congratulations from his wife on his marvelous promotion. He kept running the picture in his mind until it was fully developed in the subconscious. He kept running the picture in his mind until it was fully developed in the subconscious, meaning that he he kept doing it over and over again every day. He never stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. Even on the days where he felt like it wasn't working or it didn't work or it was bullshit, 
he kept doing it. He kept running the picture in his mind until it was fully developed in the subconscious. And much to his delight, the promotion was confirmed objectively. The two blind states in him began to see because he brought about a harmonious union of his conscious and subconscious mind. These two phases synchronized and agreed on promotion. And what he subjectively felt as true became an objective manifestation. So his conscious mind and his subconscious mind agreed and it made manifest. So that's manifestation in a nutshell when you can get your right and your left brain to become whole and agree on something they become whole and it manifests. That's the law. But on earth, it takes time. So it manifests before you see it. And then when you see it, by that time, you, you don't move on to something else. So be grateful. That's why I be always in a rush to get something else and get this and get that and just keep trying to get stuff. Well, that's not the point. I mean, if you like stuff, that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't like material things. I'm just saying that's not the ultimate goal. The cry of the world is, Lord, that our eyes may be open. Jesus is your awareness of the spiritual power within you and your, your capacity to use it so that you can rise above any predicament or limitation. The Bible says Jesus touched their eyes. When you touch something, you become aware of it as a sensation, a feeling. You have made contact, so to speak. You touch the spiritual power or the presence of God with your thoughts. Your mental picture. And immediately their eyes received sight. This means that you will get an immediate response from the spirit within you whose nature is responsive. Receptive. So the, so the, the right brain is... The feminine brain, the receptive brain, the responsive brain. The left brain is the masculine brain, the, or the brain that gives orders, the analytical brain. If you get them to agree, boom. They don't be agreeing sometimes. Your right, your your left brain, you might say, I want I want to get this new house. That's what your left brain is saying, I want to get this new house. But your right side is saying, can't afford that house with your broke ass. <laughs> so, until you can get them to agree, you're not going to get the house. Or it's going to be really tough and you're going to have to struggle and work hard for it. Which most of us are doing now. We're working hard for stuff. We don't have to do that. And I was going to say something, but you now receive your sight because your mentality, you now receive your sight because you mentally perceive and lay hold of the spiritual power within you. You comprehend his nature and give it your soul allegiance and loyalty. The maker of your eyes can heal your eyes. The maker of your eyes can heal your eyes. Jesus is always passing by for the simple reason that your desire is your Jesus. Every problem has its solution or savior in the form of a desire. The desire is walking down the streets of your mind now. There 
is a multitude of fears, doubts, and anxious, anxious, anxious thoughts, which challenges your desire and divides your allegiance. This is the multitude which, according to the parable, tries to restrain the blind men, but they cried the more, meaning that you must dynamically and decisively break through that motley crew of negative thoughts in your mind. You must push them all aside and have eyes only for your Savior, your desire, your, the solution. It's to save him. Cause Jesus is not gonna come down here and do it for you. You you got you need a solution. <laughs> How do you get the solution? By going within yourself and believing in the God within you. That's how you get the solution. Instead of being in fear and in, you don't ever get to dominate it because you have succumbed to fear instead of solutions. So solutions is your savior, not Jesus. Because Jesus is not going to come down here and put your... <laughs> Jesus is not going to come down here and play the good toy for you. You got to do it yourself. You got to find a solution to learn how to play the good toy. Find a solution to learn how to take care of yourself. Find a solution to learn how to do whatever or fix whatever you think you got to fix. And I'm talking to myself too. This is the multitude which, according to the parables, tries to restrain the blind men, but they cry the more, meaning that you must dynamically and decisively break through that motley crew of negative thoughts in your mind. You must push them all aside and have eyes only for your savior, your desire. Set your desire on high. Love it. Be loyal to it. Kiss it affectionately. Let it captivate you. You are now being loyal and you will succeed in touching the healing presence within you. At the moment you touch it, the infinite healing power flows through the channel you created mm. and your prayer is answered. Hold on. Give me one of them so you have paper. Hold on. We should not ask for more light. Rather, our prayer should be, Oh God, give me eyes to see the light. The light of God always was now is and ever shall be it is wonderful